Software developer reacts to the Stack Overflow developer survey. They surveyed 90,000 developers. There's so many different ways I could go about naming this video. I feel like there's a lot of like, magician reacts to this. Filmmaker reacts to this. PewDiePie reacts to everything. So, I, that, that could be a good title. I don't know if that's the way I'm gonna go about it. So for those of you who don't know what the Stack Overflow Developer Survey is, it's essentially exactly what it says in the title. If we're reading straight off the website, Stack Overflow's annual developer survey is the largest and most comprehensive survey of people who code around the world. Each year we field a survey covering everything from developers' favorite technologies to their job preferences. This year marks the ninth year we've published our annual developer survey results and nearly 90,000 developers took the 20 minute survey survey earlier this year. Okay, so before we hop on in to going over the developer survey, I'm going to be skipping around because some of the things I find kind of boring. I did this same video last year and there's there's some parts that I just I just don't really care about that much or I just find incredibly boring to explain to the camera. Plus there are a few things that are Stack Overflow metrics that they took their results and created those particular metrics. Think of this as I'm giving you my two cents, a little bit more insight into what I do as a developer and kind of where I am as a developer in my career, as well as just taking the Stack Overflow survey myself, considering I missed it during the time frame it was being offered. Take with that what you will, let's get started. Geography, for me, United States of America is where I would be taking mine. So I'd be sitting right here with another 23.64% of people who took this survey. Developer roles, so developer type. The first thing I notice when we look at developer type is that you're able to select multiple developer types, hence why all of the percentages equal more than 100%. So for me, I'd consider myself a full stack developer I guess enterprise applications? I would have to look up the exact definition for that. But I consider myself a full stack developer first and foremost because I do front end work, I do back end work, I do everything in between, obviously, if you're going to do both. I do database work, and I, mean, I guess I do other work as well, but I, I think those are the three main things that, that are a requirement of a full stack developer. If I'm wrong, please correct me. And I no longer fall under this student category. Contributing to open source. <laughs> This has to be the second question. Never. This is not the activity graph of someone who participates in open source. Please don't judge me. Coding as a hobby. Yes. This question isn't asking, do you code as a hobby or profession? This question is asking, do you code outside of work? Although I like to make videos more than I like to code outside of work, I do code. I have uh, that little uh, stock trading algorithm that I work on in the background. I don't want to share that with you until I'm like done with it because I hate like unfinished things. Experience, years since learning to code. Are we always learning to code? Hmm. I'm gonna say since I began learning to code, which was about five to six years ago is when I essentially wrote my first line of code. So five to nine years. Good grief, I feel like every single one I've been a part of the majority. Your favorite online learning platform for creators? Skillshare, obviously. I mean, that's kind of the only option because that's the only choice that you would ever make. I wonder why they have this little description down here. Everyone knows what Skillshare is. But in case you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning platform. They have courses for anything from software development, design, videography, photography, marketing, business, freelance stuff. Basically, they have it all. If you're someone who wants to create anything, anyway, anyhow, there's probably a course on it on Skillshare and if you want, you can go browse through their library, see all of the different video courses they have. And when you find a course you like, come back to this video, click on the link in the top of the description just below this video, because the first 500 of y'all who sign up using that link in the top of the description get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. And that is courtesy of Skillshare. So Skillshare, thank you. Years coding professionally, less than five years. So of course I'm gonna be part of the majority again. Writing that first line of code. Who in the world writes their first line of code at younger than 10 years old? What? For me, <laughs> it was 18 to 19 years old. So 14.3% glad to see I'm at least like in that realm of, of you know, the teens. Education, how many developers are students? I am no longer a student. This is the first year I could say that essentially ever. <laughs> Educational attainment, bachelor's degree, 
undergraduate major, computer science. I mean, I figured I'd be part of the majority for that one, especially considering they're including computer engineering and software engineering alongside computer science. Other types of education. So here is another, like you can pick multiple. Taught yourself a new language framework or tool without taking a formal course, yes. Taken an online course in programming or software development, yes. Contributed to open source software, Received on-the-job training in software development? Yes. I mean, I, aren't you going to learn on the job? Like I learn obviously from my peers and from the seniors and from the tech lead and all those folks. I didn't have any like, I guess formal, let's sit down in a classroom on the job training. I don't know, I don't know what that, what that part actually means. Participate in a hackathon? I've never done that actually. Participate in online coding competitions? I've dabbled with all of these actually, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have checked that box. And then no. Evaluating competence. This one's interesting because it has a lot to do with the whole imposter syndrome, Dunning-Kruger effect deal. Because it's so, it's so interesting to see how people respond to this. For me, I would say I'm average. You know, maybe that's just me being indecisive because you know, I don't want to lean one way or another. But I, I'd consider myself average. In all honesty, I'd, I'd consider myself average more so, but if I had to lean one way, it would probably be closer to a little below average than a little above average. Life outside work. Children and other dependents. I have two puppies, does that count? Are you the IT support person for your family? <laughs> yeah, size. <laughs> That's a good answer. Oh, and also yes. Interesting. I mean, of course, it's not only for the family. It's for the family. By that meaning my wife. It's also my brothers. It's also my parents. It's also my friends. It's also the guy down the street. It's everybody. Social media use. Of course, the first one is going to be Reddit. I feel like so many developers just love Reddit. But for me, obviously, I mean, you know, we're kind of we're kind of communicating right now through YouTube. YouTube is going to be my number one. Not only because I use it for my videos, but because I'll listen to podcasts. I'll watch videos. I'll play music. Everything that's going on in the background at work in my headphones is YouTube. And then second and third would have to be Twitter and Instagram if I'm able to choose more than one. What individual person will have the most influence in tech this year? Me! I will, obviously. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a joke. I'd say Elon Musk. I mean, maybe this is just me hopping on the bandwagon considering he's outdoing number two, Jeff Bezos, by 23%. But Elon Musk is a beast. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. All right, here we go. Most popular technologies, programming, scripting, and markup languages. All right, so for me, the programming, scripting, and markup languages, I use HTML and CSS. Yes, I did skip JavaScript. SQL, Java, and instead of JavaScript, I use TypeScript because of its similarity to Java. It just makes it easier for me. Java, TypeScript is more similar to Java than JavaScript. Hmm. And then I do Python because I've been working, you know, that whole stock trading algorithm thing that I work on in the background, Python. <sighs> and I'm sorry, Swift, I'm sorry. I do miss you, I do indeed miss you, but I don't know what to say, I just don't know. Web frameworks, Angular, and Spring. Databases, Oracle. Development environment and tools. Most popular development environments, of course, is gonna be VS Code. Everyone uses VS Code. I use VS Code and I use Eclipse. Those are the two that I would've chosen. Notepad++? Is this like a meme or do people actually use Notepad++ as their primary development environment? What in the world is going on here? People use Notepad++ like that? And then all of my Vim friends out there. Developers primary operating system, Windows. Oh, ho, ho, look at all you ragging on my Windows 8. Okay, these people probably don't use Windows 8, but at work, I have Windows 10, but I actually used Ubuntu, which is Linux based for my development environment. So that's 100% what I would have answered. That's interesting. A lot of people use Windows for their development environment. It's interesting. That's, a, that's similar to how so many people are so vocal about using IntelliJ over Eclipse, but in reality, it's very, very close in how many people use each. 
Same thing with Windows. Like, so many people talk about how they use Linux and, like, why do you have Windows when in reality, according to the survey, Windows almost doubles Linux-based environment. All right, employment. Employment status, I am employed full-time. Company type, this is a very interesting category. So we are software development other. Company size, many of y'all know I work at a startup. Two to nine employees is where I'd sit. How long ago did developers last change jobs? For me, less than a year ago, of course I'm in the majority again, because I started this job, which was right out of college, just under a year ago. Ask me in another month, I'd be sitting in this category. Interview practices, I've talked about many of my interviews in previous videos on the channel. If you wanna check those out, feel free. And for me, it is almost all, actually it's always this, interview with people in senior management roles. Of course, you start off with HR and then you go from there. I've been lucky in the sense that I haven't really had to do any of this stuff. Code review, yes, because I see the value in a code review. I almost said because I was told to do so. That's, I guess that's why we started. That, that, that's why I started doing like peer code review, but this is why I continue to do code review. Unit tests. Does your company, of course. Yes, it's part of the process. I don't understand how y'all don't. Hours worked per week, 40 to 44 hours, so along with the majority. And that's it. I appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please help me out and give it a big thumbs up. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I'd highly recommend checking out some of the other videos on my channel, especially if you made it this far in this video. And remember, two months of Skillshare Premium for free for the first 500 of y'all that use the link in the top of the description. That helps support me, it helps support them, and y'all are getting something for free. So I'd really appreciate y'all taking advantage of that. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.